We, got, we just got our Whitetail Hill chestnut trees in. So I ordered the Chinese chestnuts as well as the pawpaw trees. So let's knock these open and see what we got in here. All right, pull them out, buddy. Let's see what we got. Be careful with them. Try not to break them off there. Take pretty good to the box, ain't you? Yeah. Okay, so we got our, uh, so our bare root plants. Looks like they've got uh, some pretty good buds on the ends there. It's a good sign. Lots of budding. Pop this open and see kind of what the root system looks like. So this came with the mycorrhizae granules. Basically a fungus that uh, that helps trees grow. I know these were prevalent around like oaks and stuff like that. The mycorrhizae be surrounded surrounding the trees and it spreads out and it kind of helps the roots to absorb the nutrients is kind of the way I understand it back when I was taking the biology classes and whatnot. So I just put basically one tablespoon uh, on each in each tree and uh, hopefully that will kind of give it a little boost. So I'm just going to start unwrapping these roots and I'm going to see how dry they are. And if they're too dry, I'm going to add just a little bit of water and then I'm going to wrap them back up until I am ready to plant. Because what you don't want to do, as it states in the packaging, is you don't want to get the roots dry. Even just for an hour or two and it can kill the plant. You don't want to be exposed to air at all for very long. Okay, so they're not too bad. I'm just going to mist them just a little bit. And I'm going to wrap them back up and uh, hopefully they'll be ready to plant. That'll get them by until I can plant them. If you don't want them completely saturated, just want to keep them moist. Wife's helping me today. I thought she was going to help me plant trees, <laughs> but she's actually just came to steal all my plants that were around this old farmstead. I mean, I only have five of the chestnuts. So if I do three, do three. along the fence line right there, and, one, and then one right there and one right there, that tree's going out. And so that'll be a little chestnut uh, grove. And then it's not too close to the road because I don't want, you know, if I'm going to have deer underneath of them eating, I don't want it to be too close to the road. I want them to have some cover. Build a house back on yeah, I want them to have a little bit of cover and protection from the road and where they feel safe enough to come out and eat. I think I'm just going to use that hurricane digger and go down a little bit and then I'll dig it out a little bit around. I don't know how big the roots are going to spread, but I think I'll use that at least to get the depth down. So these need 30 feet space all around. So these trees are a little close, but I'm gonna be cutting these trees out. So, so we'll have one here. So we're gonna definitely have to protect these because being out in the middle of the field like that, bucks are gonna see that and they're just gonna have to rub on them. So we're gonna have to have some protection. Gonna have to have a fence around them. And these are not, not really cheap. So I definitely wanna try to keep them protected. So here's the pawpaw and here's our chestnuts. Not super big. All right, get them out of the bag here. What I don't want to do is expose these roots, roots to uh, air. They need to be kept covered and protected until they are in the ground. So we'll start with our first one here, sort of untangle our roots. I'm just gonna actually leave these in the bag until we're ready to put them in. I have my holes dug. So I'm just kind of getting an idea how big the roots are. So that hurricane digger, will go down plenty deep, but I think I'm gonna have to widen it out with my shovel. So let me kind of make sure that I got my measurements all good here. So I'm gonna just kind of loosely walk it off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want them at least 30 feet apart would be ideal. I wanna give them optimum growing space. So like I said, I'm taking these trees all out here eventually. They will be dead. So they're not gonna uh, take any nutrients from this, this chestnut here. All right, so the first one's gonna go Right here, I just wanted a little far away from the, the fence, and uh, we'll just kind of walk it off here. All right, so we're talking about right. I could probably squeeze them in just a little bit closer, won't hurt too bad. So I want to put the next one right here. It's roughly, that's roughly 20 feet. About right in here is where I want this other one. Perfect. 
get about five feet or six feet off that fence line and then we've just got two more so I'm gonna try to make it even with this one over here just a, aesthetically I mean clearly it doesn't matter for the deer it doesn't care really where it is but I do so we're gonna kind of try to keep it like a little aesthetically appealing kind of lined up I'm gonna go roughly 18 inches in the ground though looks like so that it has plenty uh, of space loose soil so that taproot can go down into the dirt gather the nutrients up <laughs> got the pawpaw trees we have additional pawpaw trees order 25 from the conservation department which are considerably smaller they're only saplings are only about that big with roots they like wet roots um, they like well-drained soil but they like they like a lot of moisture and they can also tolerate a lot of shade tolerance. so I kind of put them in this little uh, little kind of like it's a little opening but it's definitely not gonna receive a bunch of sunlight and uh, since they're so small I just drilled these little bitty holes See, that thing has that auger on there that bit it's pretty pretty uh goes pretty far down in there and uh so hopefully that i can stick that tap root and then kind of just waller out a little bit of this with the shovel and that way them roots can spread out a little bit and hopefully we have a pretty high survivability so i, I put a whole bunch of these holes all over the place because what this is it stays wet all the time because this is the pond over here that i haven't talked about much but that's going to be a project all on its own but it is going to stay there and so whenever this this uh pond gets too full so this is its drainage ditch so the water just runs out of that pond right there and i'm actually i'd like to scoop a little bit of this out obviously it's going to make it a, an ordeal with the the uh, trees in the way there <clears throat> but being wet like that it's going to hopefully one you know if this does flood a lot uh, which which it actually it really doesn't flood a whole bunch the banks are pretty high It can hold a lot more water than this and I believe there's probably a slow leak in this pond So it doesn't ever get super high, but if we had like a really high water uh, Year that water would run over the top of this, but it does stay wet a lot Because it's right. It has that little hump right there But then it gets a little bit lower. So it's right at the same level as this pond so <clears throat> for whatever reason the uh the ground is just always saturated here. You can see this one of these I did see the hole is actually filling up with water down there. So it's pretty wet. And um, so hopefully these pawpaw trees will like it in here and they'll stay wet, stay well watered. They'll be protected from the sun a little bit because they don't like full sun. Uh, they like to be a little in the shade. Seems like they grow better as an understory plant, but throw those pawpaws in there and uh, not only will that give something for the deer to eat, but it'll also give something for us to eat if there's any left. So these deals I got off of Amazon, put a link in the description if you want to check them out and interested. So this goes at the base of the tree. And what it's supposed to do, obviously it's supposed to protect from little critters like rabbits, rodents, you know, mice, stuff like that from gnawing at the bark. The stuff that can basically get underneath or inside of the uh, the bigger cages I'm gonna put around them. Hopefully this will put a stop to them gnawing at that bark. But what's supposed to happen is as this as this tree grows, these are supposed to adjust, right? So you can adjust to where you want, where it protects that bottom layer, and then here at the bottom. These will come out so like the root ball gets bigger or whatever at the base and so it'll it's not going to be trapped you know it'll be able to spread that out and as the tree grows bigger and bigger you can adjust this and it gets by the time it's this big it's probably going to be okay but if not you can always put something else on it 
but I thought I wanted to give him the best chance at survival. He's had a pretty high rating and we're just going to see how they do. All right, ready to set the first one in. Might have to grab the shovel and do a little bit more digging actually. What are those, daffodils or irises? Right on. Just a digging fool, aren't you? Can I borrow this shovel for just a second? So I just want to widen this top part up. I want to give plenty of room for these roots to branch out as much as they need to. So there's a lot to plant a tree. I never did realize. Uh, planted a lot of trees and a lot of them have lived and a lot of them have died. And so I started to do a lot more research on what makes it like that. And sometimes it's just chance in the, the soil and there ain't a lot you can do about it, but you can, you can sometimes, you can improve the soil. So I stumbled upon this thing called the Ella White method. Okay, so what this kind of consists of is, so this chick, and I don't know a lot about her, this was named kind of after her. So, uh, so this is way in a nutshell. Like this is a very condensed, I only picked out what I needed to know uh, information out of, cherry picked it for myself. Okay, so she, what she was, you know, basically trying to teach, I guess, is kind of that a tree uh, does best, you know, in a place where, you know, trees do best. So like in the forest, right? So what you want to do, a lot of people just go out into a lawn or like a, a cow pasture or something that they're trying to convert into a, a, a forest, you know, reforestation, whatever you want to call it. So they're out there just throwing these trees inside of this stuff, but they don't necessarily contain all the right nutrients. So what she was suggesting, and what the science is kind of suggesting is that, uh, you know, having sort of trying to copy what you have on the forest floor, is very uh, conducive to having like more success when you're planting your trees. So what she'd do, so she planted a tree, she would take all these different elements, such as even so far as dead animals. You know, you're in a forest, animals die, they decay. Uh, you got old leaves, you got old grass, vegetation. You got even like some rocks here and there, um, some sand, you know, all these different elements. And she'd throw all that stuff in there and kind of layer it in. Now she went way more sciencey uh, about it. I'm not gonna go that sciencey, but um, basically she'd throw all this stuff in there and it would be more successful. Now I, I planted a lot of trees today, so I don't have the means to be able to do that today. But you know, for like your fruit trees, stuff like that in your orchard, it's something that you should definitely look up and I know I didn't give a very good description but it is definitely something to, to check out if you're wanting to uh, increase the success rate of your trees that you plant and if I had more time and means I would do that and I have done that in the past for my orchard trees and it does seem like they do a lot better all right pretty happy with that now we can get to planting Okay, so here's our pawpaw trees from uh, Chestnut Hill Whitetails. Here's our pawpaw trees from the conservation department. Uh, kind of a significant difference in size, but you kind of plant these pretty much exactly the same way as the chestnuts. We're just kind of, they've got a pretty large taproot here too. And so where that auger bit made its big divot. I'm gonna try to get that tap root inside of there and then make sure it's even with the ground and then we'll just fill it all back in with this loose soil. I did forget to put the mycorrhizae around, but let's put it on top here and I'll soak in. All right, now we just got 
few more to do. And then we're gonna throw our guard on here. Got it. Yep, just like that. And And then we hope and pray. Um, I've got several holes through here and then I got three down there and then that should be it. I'd love to take a lot more care to do this, but we're kind of fighting. We got kids that are about to get off the bus. So we're kind of fighting for time here.